Hello there fellow porters, Kato Genesis here with a guide to all 56 memory chips you can find in Death Stranding and Death Stranding Director's Cut, collecting all of which results in the Fount of Knowledge achievement. If you've already picked up a few of these memory chips, you'll notice that these are actually numbered and organized by category instead of when these memory chips appear, which is a nightmare if you're trying to do a nice sweep from east to west. So I painstakingly reordered them to do just that, while still showing the game's numbers in parentheses, both in the headers and in the description below if you're looking for a specific memory chip. Lastly, if any of these memory chips are not where they're supposed to be, that might be a sign that you'll need to rest, check some emails, and or progress through the story. I've covered all the bases, I hope, so let's go find those 56 memory chips of Death Stranding. The first memory chip we're going for contains details on the Profondo Rosso original motion picture soundtrack, which is located in the ruins section between Capital Knot City and the Isolation Ward. Between these two locations is a few building ruins that you get to run through towards the beginning of the game. If you're running towards the Isolation Ward, once it is in view, take a left at the next intersection and the chip will be on top of one of the ruined buildings at the end of the street. The second chip containing info on Lucio Fulci's horror and thriller compilation is located at the incinerator west of Capital Knot City, you know, where you took Bridget's body. As a result, this should be marked on your map already and a short trek from Capital Knot City to the southwest. Beware that there may be BTs in the area, so plan accordingly at least up until you get to the incinerator itself. Once there, you'll need to climb up onto the incinerator roof and get to the southernmost end, the southernmost corner of the incinerator, there is where you will find the memory chip. The third chip we're going over is for the Frame Arms Bayako data. This is not far from the way station west of Capital Knot City, the first way station you come across in the game. Surprisingly, this is the chip that is labeled as 01. You can see how the order is all messed up already. And also one that's probably the most out in the open because it's on the path just southwest of the way station, as soon as you're on your way towards the mule camp that is southwest. The next one contains data on the Seven Samurai and is located near the second mule camp you'll come across southwest of the Distro Center west of Capital Knot City. That is a lot of directions that I just gave you, but the Distro Center that's in the eastern region, it's southwest of that. Once you're up at the main ledge leading into the territory of these mules, there will be a cave off to your left that you can enter and use as a bypass to get into the mule camp unnoticed, as well as a little ledge you can climb up to that will contain the memory chip we're seeking. The next memory chip, which contains data on the God of War original video game soundtrack, is on the road from the Distro Center towards the Wind Farm. As soon as two of the wind turbines come into view, fire off your Odor Deck scanner and you will find the memory chip near a small rock formation on your way there. The sixth memory chip we'll go to contains info and an uh, image of Frame Arms Girls by Akko. And this is at the wind farm itself, once you've traversed through the windy terrain and BT territory. Facing the entrance to where the wind farm terminal is, off to the left there'll be a small power station, and behind the railing there will be the memory chip you're seeking. Speaking of BT territory, that's where the seventh one, labeled Dawn slash Silent Poets, is. This is the super rocky terrain covered in BTs in between Port Knot City and the Distro Center west of Capital Knot City. Thwart or avoid BTs up until the point where you come upon a rock formation shaped like a portal, or an open-ended cave, or a donut. It is right under this rock formation where you will find the memory chip we're looking for. The eighth one, labeled Death Stranding slash Low Roar, is in full view of Port Knot City. Before you reach the street of Port Knot, off to the left will be some old school shipping containers. Right in front of one of these containers will be the memory chip. The last of the chips for the eastern area will be number 9 in the Port Knot City limits. This chip contains data on the movie Big Fish. Towards the back of Port Knot City, there will be a whole lot of better organized old school shipping containers. So if you head towards the southwestern wall, you'll see shipping containers stacked nicely, along with a green one that's stacked higher than the rest. On top of this green container will be the memory chip you're seeking. These shipping containers are also stacked in such a way to where they can be climbed up without the use of a ladder if you want to. 
We're now moving on to the biggest map of the game, the Central Region. And we'll start with the 10th chip, which is labeled Zero Slash Low Roar, found in Lake Knot Harbor, the place where you arrive as soon as you cross the ocean. While you're still in view of the water, just at the base of the metal stairs, there will be two half-sized blue shipping containers. On top of the one closest to the stairs will be the memory chip you're looking for. Number 11, which contains data on Frame Arms Kagatora, is in Lake Knot proper, or kind of closer to the walled-in section of the city that you never get to see. All you'll need to do here is follow the road straight north up until you hit that big, rusty wall, and there will be a truck parked right in the tunnel. The memory chip is inside of the bed of this truck. The 12th memory chip, labeled Eggshell Carving, is found in the mule camp, the first mule camp, of the central region that would be south of Lake Knot City, just right outside of the city itself. Once you get into and incapacitate or avoid the mules in this camp, you can go into the central tent, which will contain the memory chip next to some books that are laying on top of a green cot. The 13th chip we're going to go for, labeled Glass Craft, is in a small cave along the rocky terrain in between the engineer and the craftsman, just on the edge of the mule camp that's here too. If a road has already been established here, it will be actually lower than the road itself. Another way of describing it would be just once you've passed the river on your way west, start scanning around the big black rocky area, and a small indent on the northwestern side, resembling a cave of sorts, or at least timefall cover, will have the memory chip you're seeking. We're on to the 14th chip that contains details on the Honda NSR 250R. This memory chip is kept in the mule camp that is in between the engineer, the elder, and the craftsman, and where you'll first come across mules who have vehicles of their own, being trucks. Sneak or fight your way to the main mule tent, and this chip is sitting next to a toolbox on a small gray table. The 15th chip contains data on the movie Christine. This memory chip is almost directly in your path from the engineer to the elder. So when you're on your way to the elder at the very bottom of the cliff, before you start needing to climb up to where the elder lives, there will be a small indentation that resembles a cave and inside of that small cave will be the memory chip we're seeking. The 16th memory chip, which contains a little blurb about the horror movie Matongo, is at one of the many landmarks you will find throughout Death Stranding, and this memory chip is found at the largest coral formation that is southeast of the Elder before you get into the film director's territory. It's found on the southern side of the massive formation, and because of what this formation is, it's a great place to pick up a whole bunch of cryptobiotes too while you're there. Since we're going by progression, memory chip number 17 will have us take a U-turn and go back up towards the Craftsman for An Unknown Man's Journal Part 1. This memory chip is found at the Ruined Mall, north of the Craftsman. Fortunately, you won't have to fight off any BTs to retrieve it, because once you come across the wall that is separating you from the main mass of BTs, off to your left will be a small entrance into the mall proper, and it is right next to this entrance where you will find the memory chip. Even though you won't have to directly encounter BTs when you go to pick it up, the next couple, you might, so be prepared. The 18th memory chip references Fright Night, and is located between the abandoned factory and the abandoned mall. Here in the BT Jellyfish field, heading towards the coastline, there will be a decent sized rock jutting up next to a small patch of coral. This is where the memory chip is. The 19th memory chip, which has data on the Thelma original motion picture soundtrack, is located in the abandoned factory to the northwest of the Craftsman, and is often a host of Timefall and Gazer BTs. Clear out or avoid, and you're looking for the warehouse that is here, the largest structure there is, and inside of this warehouse at the abandoned factory, the memory chip is sitting inside an open blue cargo container. The 20th chip that contains data on the Yamaha MT-09 is located at the Mule Camp southwest of the Craftsman, which is also northwest of the Distro Center. Again, just like previous Mule Camps, head towards the primary tent, and the memory chip is sitting on another one of those gray tables, sitting next to what looks like a gray fuel can. The 21st memory chip containing data on the Frame Arms Genbu, or Genbu, is located near the weather station. Again, another massive landmark that can be seen from great distances. Once reaching the weather station, this is actually a short distance south of the main satellite dish. Where you'll find it is actually at the base of the southern satellite dome, out in the open, ready to be picked up. 
The 22nd memory chip, titled Low Roar slash Low Roar, is found along the riverside when you're traveling south from the weather station to Timefall Farm. After hitting the blackened landscape at the bottom of the hill, and just before grass and shrubbery start showing up again, near the riverside there, there will be a large blackened rock. At the base of this rock is where you'll find the memory chip. The 23rd memory chip is next and contains schematics of the reverse trike ride type, which makes this memory chip the most useful when it comes to utility because you get something that you can ride out of it. It is a little bit out of the way from the path that we're going here, so once you've hit that southern edge of the blackened landscape, it will be heading east towards the giant waterfall. Of the multiple outcroppings here, you'll want to go to the lowest one because that will lead you to a wonderful view of the waterfall itself and a short path down to the cave that we're looking for that contains this memory chip. Once you reach the cliff edge that's a fair distance from the ground, descend however you see fit and right at the front of this cave down here will be the memory chip. The 24th memory chip, not nearly as exciting, contains data on a coffee cup. This one is found in the mule camp that is northeast of Timefall Farm, so we're going to wheel around a little bit and go southwest again towards the mule camp here. And in the central tent, like all the other mule camps before now, this one is found sitting in the corner of a beautiful orange and gold rug within. The 25th memory chip, which contains info on the Honda Rebel 500, is still in the Mule territory, but further west at the warehouse that is north of the Timefall Farm. So still in Mule territory, but pretty much abandoned. With your back to the Timefall Farm and stepping into the entrance, there will be a stairwell on the left side that leads you right up to the memory chip at the top of the stairs. The 26th memory chip we're going for is Soap Bubble. This one's easy to miss and easy to get to because it's on the Timefall Farm roof, the front corner of it, in fact. And you can get up here by going around the back because there's a nice slope that leads all the way up there. Uh, climb up the slope and the memory chip will be right up there where you can place an anchor if you have one and take a rope back down. The 27th memory chip is another soundtrack for Valhalla Rising by Peter Peter and Peter Kayed. This is located at the Tory Gate that is well hidden southeast of the Timefall Farm and east of the racetrack if you have director's cut. But I don't believe the Tory Gate is in view until you're like right up there. So do what you can with ladders and whatnot to climb up these mountainous cliffs and towards the peak of this formation will be a Tory gate at the base of which is the memory chip we're looking for. There's a nice cluster of chiral crystals nearby too. The 28th memory chip, which has data on the bridge on the river Kauai, is appropriately right on the river, the one that's fed by the massive waterfall we previously went to, particularly the section of river that is northeast of the Timefall Farm on the busted dam that is on your way to South Knot City. You barely need to clamber up on the dam itself, since the memory chip is sitting on these smaller pieces of concrete closer to the river's edge. The 29th memory chip, which has an image of pottery, these ones are for fragile, understandably, is found at the incinerator ruins near South Knot City. This is in full view of the entrance of South Knot City and a lot of the nearby areas too. Shouldn't be too difficult to spot that smokestack. Right at the base of that smokestack, you can climb up, may need to place a ladder, but the memory chip is at the base area of this smokestack. The 30th memory chip for Max Factory Luden's Figma, it's Luden's figurine data, is in the South Knot City limits. Again, this is another scenario where you go towards the direction of where you're not allowed to go, the big old wall blocking off the city proper, but then hang a left before you hit the tunnel to look over the South Knot crater and towards the edge of that crater among some of the debris will be the memory chip. The 31st memory chip is for Frame Arms Mingwu and is located right next to Mama's Lab, which is just a little ways north of South Knot City. If you're heading out of Mama's Lab and go off to the right, part of the ruins here you'll actually be able to crouch and move through towards South Knot City. It is inside of this little, well, cave made by ruins that you'll find the memory chip. 
The 32nd chip we're going for is an unknown man's journal part two. And this one is found in the South Knot ruins, which is north of what's left of South Knot now. If you choose to fight the BTs here, be aware and ready to fight more than one lion. You can also, of course, trigger the catchers and run away and get the same effect you would want for easy traversal, which is removing the time fall temporarily. Either way, conveniently on the map, X marks the spot. The X is actually marked with the remainder of the roads here. One passing over the other. Directly in the middle of this X, on the lower side, there will be a now inferior truck that is completely ruined, and the chip will be sitting on the tailgate of this truck. The 33rd memory chip will have data on the Triumph Street Triple RS, and this one is found at the junk dealer whose shelter is located northeast of the ruins of South Knot. The chip we're looking for is actually among the junk that this junk dealer hoards outside of his place, on the southeastern side, specifically on top of a large gray cargo container, accented by a few rusted out cars too. Since it is a pile of junk, it should be fairly easy to climb to retrieve the chip as well. The 34th chip contains data on once in a long while slash low roar and is north of the film director who is northeast of the junk dealer in the red Mars-like landscape of this area. As I mentioned, north of the film director, there is a break in the landscape or a crevice, if you will. And inside of this crevice that is also full of VOG is also the memory chip that we're looking for. The oxygen mask that you do get pretty late into the game will be useful for something like this, but this is also doable if you have a decent amount of stamina, the power glove or silver hand, as well as an anchor and a rope. But the oxygen mask is obviously the easiest route to go along with a way to climb down and up. Next up, the 35th on our list is for the Triumph Bonneville Bobber memory chip. And this one is found in the mule camp within the junk dealer and film director region. So northwest of the junk dealer and film director. Like pretty much all the other mule camps that include a memory chip, this one is also found inside of the main tent of the area. It is on the black couch inside next to a few books. Now we start heading towards the mountain region for the Bronson soundtrack, the 36th on this list. Past the factory ruins here is the way station north of Mountain Knot City. This is the starting point in search of the memory chip we're looking for. Towards the west, there are some rocky cliffs that frequently have rock falls as you're traversing them. Head over the first big patch of green grassy area, and you can use your odor deck to find the memory chip a little bit easier. But once you hear, I believe, the second rock fall, that will be the signal to look around nearby for the memory chip. And you should find it right on the ground next to some more rocks. Now we're on to the 37th memory chip, which contains data on the movie Stand By Me, located at the only operable incinerator in the central region, officially termed incinerator west of Lake Knot City. Just like the incinerator in the eastern map, this chip requires you to climb up on the roof of the incinerator as well. Luckily, there's slopes everywhere. But this one is actually near the smokestack on one of the catwalks. So if you climb up on the roof and then go straight to the smokestack on the great catwalk there will be the memory chip. And to leave, since there are plenty of slopes, you can simply climb the catwalk railing back to the slight slope to the top of the roof and then back down. The 38th memory chip contains data on the Yamaha RD500LC and is located in the terrorist camp that is southwest of the incinerator of the central region. You can expect that the chip is located in the central tent just like any other mule camp, but these are terrorists rather than mules, so they are geared out with lethal weaponry, lethal turrets if you're playing director's cut, and a truck that they are happy to run you over with. This memory chip will be sitting on the cot inside of the middle tent that has an open sleeping bag on it. The 39th memory chip has data on the Kotobukiya Ludens girl model. I hope I pronounced that right. And this one is found at the distribution center north of Mountain Knot City, also just west of the terrorist camp that we went to for the last one. This memory chip is pretty close to the entrance of the distribution center, actually. And if you're facing the entrance just to the left, you'll see the large semi trucks that all of us wish we could drive. On the hood, or where the hood would be on one of these semi trucks, is where you'll find the memory chip. The 40th memory chip we're going for is the Kawasaki Z1 memory chip. And this one is found in another terrorist camp, this time the one that is south of the distribution center that's north of Mountain Knot City. I 
said that, and it sounds weird, but that's how things are labeled in the game. Another way of describing it is just the terrorist camp that is in between Mountain Knot and the distro center of the mountain area. There are two tents in this terrorist camp, so I can't use the use the main tent descriptor. So it's actually the northernmost tent that the memory chip is inside. Once you make it to this tent, you'll be looking for a toolbox, a red toolbox that the memory chip is sitting on top of. We're going off the beaten path a little bit again to the wine glass memory chip, the, the 41st on this list. This one is found in a small cave that is in between the Mountaineer and the terrorist camp that we were just in. So if you stand on the cliffs behind the terrorist camp in between where the two tents are and go straight uphill, look for the break in the trees. Go into the break in the trees on the right and just follow the mountain straight up until you start hitting snow. About halfway up the snowy incline, there'll be a little overhang on the left that is sand sized or trike sized if you brought a trike. Go along this little overhang and it will open up to a passage that has a cave off to the right. Inside of this cave is the memory chip. The 42nd memory chip is for the Sentinel 16th Ludens action figure, and this one is located in another cave west of Mountain Knot City. In fact, this might be a path that you'll take to Mountain Knot City because you'll only have to worry about rough terrain and a river. Once hitting the big river bend towards Mountain Knot City, there's a pretty decent sized cave here, both for cover and that contains the memory chip we're looking for. The 43rd memory chip, which has data on Godzilla, is located in the tar pit that is nearby Mountain Knot City. The tar pit that is pretty full when you actually first arrive. So after you make your beginning delivery of the antimatter bomb to Mountain Knot City, you'll then be able to find this memory chip in the much smaller tar pit after said delivery. Next up is the Snow Crystal Memory Chip, the 44th in order of appearance. This one is also in the Mountain Knot City limits, in one of the small box house structures to the southwest that's just peeking over the cliffs. This is the small structure that is also in view of the BT ruins that are not far south from there. Get up to this small structure, and behind the railings, right next to the door, is where the memory chip lies. The 45th memory chip on our list is one that has data on Nicholas Winding Refn's The Wicked Die Young. And this one is found in the BT ruins that are southeast of Mountain Knot City. Easily distinguished from the rest of the snowy landscape because there's buried skyscrapers here. The middle building that does a great job at taking up the view, you'll want to go to the right of it and look for a much smaller building that is a bit more buried with rounded off corners. And while caution is advised like any other BT area, there doesn't seem to be many in your way to get to this memory chip. Among the rocks at the base of this smaller building is where you'll find the memory chip. Memory chip number 46 on our list is for the Prime 1 half-scale Luden statue. And this is in another BT-infested location, this time the one north of Mountain Knot City. The one that almost looks like a stretched out graveyard, but upon closer inspection is a bunch of girders that are bent and broken. Something you're bound to walk by upon your first delivery to the Mountaineer. The memory chip here is also not in a very densely clustered spot, so you may have to use maybe one hematic grenade, but it's actually on one of the ruined girders here, on the eastern side of these ruins. Next one is the 47th memory chip that contains data on dandelion seeds. This one is located at the remnants of the shack you are sent to to retrieve BB from Dead Man, but supposedly only after that sequence and the subsequent fight with Unger will you be able to find the memory chip in the ruins of this shack. So after the big old supercell event happens in this area between the first prepper and Mountain Knot, that is the time to go and retrieve this memory chip. The 48th memory chip on this list that contains data on the walk is actually one that is located not far from the prepper we just mentioned, at the mountain peak that is actually just north of his shelter. There's almost a natural path from the first prepper shelter up to the peak of the mountain, and while you may need a ladder or something like that to easily reach the peak, luckily the memory chip is just before the rocky peak of this mountain, and instead on a small flat rock shelf just below this highest point. So while ladders are recommended, not entirely required, to get this memory chip. The 49th memory chip we're going for contains data on the movie Dr. Strangelove, and is located at Dr. Hartman's heart-shaped lake. Approaching from this side, it looks a bit more like a butt, and the memory chip we're looking for is right in the crack of said butt. Another little fun detail if you haven't experimented here much, the water in Hartman's lake is actually shallow all the way across. So if you've got enough battery charge, you can drive straight through the lake from Hartman's place over to the memory chip, or vice versa. 
while we're near Hartman's place, we can also go for number 50 on this list, which is the frozen soap bubble memory chip. And this one is found just in the cliffs to the northwest of Dr. Hartman's house. From the gorgeous glass door entrance of Hartman's place, to reach this memory chip, you'll want to take the ladder that's off to the left. So take the stairs up and then use the ladder to reach the roof. From here, there's actually a snowy pathway that leads right up to where the memory chip lies. And when the path begins to get increasingly rocky, the cliff top to the left will have the memory chip we're seeking. Onward to memory chip 51, at least on our list, that represents fused silica, which is supposed to be in the Vogue-covered crevasse not far from the paleontologist, the second researcher after the geologist that Hartman sends you to find. This one is a bit annoying to get to appear, but we'll get to that after we go over where it actually is supposed to be. And that would be in the crevasse, get into this crevasse with your newly unlocked oxygen mask, either by walking and using a series of ladders perhaps, or an anchor from the very top and just sliding all the way down to the bottom. And at the disgusting watery base of this crevasse, there will be a small cluster of rocks poking through the surface. The memory chip lies on one of these rocks. But as I said, it's a bit annoying, so if the memory chip is not on top of the small rock, you may need to reach five stars, so deliver to the paleontologist until you reach five star rank, and receive emails from him in sequence up until the email titled, Much Respect to Porters Everywhere. What makes this tedious is you may have to rest multiple times to get this email to appear because it is the final one he sends you to go and get this memory chip. Now for one that's a little less tedious, number 52 on our list for data on the Kawasaki Ninja H2R located at the terrorist camp that is west of the paleontologist. And you should know how it goes at this point. The main largest tent is the one that contains the memory chip we're looking for. So get by those homo demons by any means necessary. And this memory chip is also like one of the previous ones on top of a green cot next to some books. We're in the home stretch in Edge Knot now, starting with the 53rd memory chip, which has data on the Harley Davidson Pan America 1250. This memory chip is very close to the entrance of the distro center here in Edge Knot, and is towards the road where you'll see all of the rusted out cars and vehicles. One of these is an open bed truck that is sunk into the ground and is at the corner of this truck's bed where you'll find the memory chip. The 54th memory chip we're going for has data on My Life directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. Not My Life in particular, it, that's the title of the thing. This one is found in the Edge Knot BT field between the distro center and the city entrance. After you pass the densely clustered jellyfish BTs and start seeing the gazers instead, wait until you reach a spot where you can see the cracked freeway going almost straight up to the right. To the left though will be a small drop off which you'll also see a truck dropped off and a few paces forward from this vertical truck step ladder is where the memory chip is sitting on the ground. Now for the 55th memory chip, which has data on the Good Smile Company Neon Droid Jumbo Ludens, another of the many examples of the Ludens figures. This one is found directly inside the Edge Knot City Distribution Center. So after passing the BT field and heading down this ever familiar ramp, the Edge Knot City memory chip is towards the back of the room, right next to the back right corner. And now for the 56th and final memory chip on our list, but I will also issue a spoiler warning before we get into the details because this does spoil quite a bit of the game. So if you haven't finished the main story of the game, please go and do that. I'll be right here when you return. Spoiler warning issued. So now into the meat and potatoes. The final memory chip, both in my order and the game's order, contains the last part of the Unknown Man's Journal. Part 3. This memory chip is actually in Peter Englert's shelter in the central region west of Lake Knot City, you know, where you deliver all the pizzas. Now to get access to this shelter, you'll need to have completed the pizza deliveries up till the one you do from Mountain Knot and finished the main story of the game. Do those things and you'll receive an email from Peter Englert thanking you for all the pizza deliveries that you had done up until this point with a few other revealing details as to who he is before he lets you know that his shelter is now open for you to enter. So after receiving this email, you need only head over to Peter Englert's shelter, head down inside, and you'll find the chip on the desk to the left of the monitors. There you go, fellow porters. Please let me know which of these 56 chips you walked by multiple times before you went and picked it up. If you're not tired of my voice yet, as well as some Death Stranding content, I also made a 30 plus tips and tricks for Death Stranding and Director's Cut, which I believe even you great deliverers might find something useful. 
Thanks to Reddit user Kanika D for allowing me to use their incredible well-marked map, which you can also find a link to down below. If you found this guide useful, entertaining, or both, please do whatever it is you see fit to show that. One of the ways is by supporting on Patreon, like the lovely people on screen, as well as Wasteland Legends, Sven, and David Hoover. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis. Keep on keeping on.